You know, when some jagoff says that he has questions that atheists fear, my first thought is, yeah, right. Get over yourself, pal. Let's do this. <laughs> Greetings, fellow space travelers. Bionic Dance here. So how many of you remember Mr. Ministry Man? Yeah, that guy. The one who had a video that was titled something like The Question Most Feared by Atheists. Well, he's decided to not only revisit that question, but to come up with more of them. <sighs> the initial intent of the question was somewhat facetious. And this would incline us to treat you with respect. Why exactly? Honestly, seriously, I do understand the idea of the burden of proof, as well as the definition of atheism. Do you? Because I notice you don't actually say what you think they are after making this claim. So, why on earth should I believe you? And even if I didn't beforehand, you guys have made it abundantly clear over the last two years or so. And you don't know how many times I've made something abundantly clear to a god-botherer, only to have them insist on not getting it. So once again, why should I believe that you have one of those clue things I've been reading so much about, hmm? So what do I really think is the atheist most feared question? Well, if you notice in the title up here... You are aware that the titles are down here now, right? The word question has been changed to questions. I fear nothing! Here's the first question. What's so great about science? So I know that's a silly and short-sighted way to word that. Actually, what it appears to be is a deliberate ploy to piss people off in order to provoke a response. So let me explain myself. Science is a wonderful thing. I believe God invented it, so obviously I would be all for it. Oh, you think God invented it, do you? You know, I hope you're aware that science is not a synonym for the natural world, but rather a name for the study of it. And thus, you are downplaying the accomplishments of humans over the millennia. Way to go. Matt Chandler, a pastor down in Texas, wrote this in one of his books. Truth is never our enemy. Ever. So we should never freak out about people who claim to have discovered truth. If it's true truth, God owns it and has already accounted for it. Which is a logical fallacy known as begging the question. If a truth is true, then it's true. No God required. There's a specific reason why most of my videos focus on philosophy rather than arguing matters of science. Which is why your videos are utter fail. If you're going to prove the existence of something, I'm sorry, but science is the tool. Philosophy will never get you to the actual real-world existence of anything. Most of the scientific findings that I'd be referencing in any given video might very well be outdated or even false within a year or so. So? Religion demanding faith of us is false right now. And religion's claims of the existence of a deity are, if not actually false, at least unfounded, unsupported by the facts. Our findings in science are constantly changing. Things that you were once considered a fool for not believing in have since been debunked. By contrast, religion has never changed. You were a fool to believe in it from the start. First of all, I am not saying that science changes, but our understanding of it does. And this is why I suspect that you have no idea what science actually is. Because you seem to be using it as a synonym for the natural world, when it is in fact the study of it. And yeah, science does change. Of course it does. As we gain a greater understanding of the universe around us, and we develop better technologies, better techniques for study, well, it helps us learn more about our world. I mean, you wanted to know what the big deal was about science? That's what. It's the best technique we have for understanding. On, but honestly, we don't really know. And you know what? That applies much more to God. Because the requirement of faith says that we don't ever get to know. We have to believe. At least with science, we get physical, tangible, objective proof that we can study, that we can check and make sure, that we can see whether or not our hypotheses are correct. You don't get that with God. So to sum up here, why champion science over all when developing your arguments? How can you stand firm on any of it when our understanding of things changes so frequently? Why? Because it works. Unlike religion, which is the philosophical equivalent of playing make-believe. 
And as a fun add-on to this question, how would you respond having used so much of modern scientific understanding to establish your positions if you were faced with a time traveler from the future who told you that everything you understood about how this universe works was completely off? Would you even believe him? Not referring to the part about him being a time traveler, but the information he was giving you. Would you even believe it? Even if he gave mountains of concrete evidence, and remember, these would be findings completely separate from your context of understanding. Do you think you could wrap your mind around the fact that everything you know about science is wrong? Well, that depends. Do I get my own hyperspace-capable spaceship? Do I get a hoverboard? Do I get to play with the time machine? In other words, yeah, not only could I wrap my head around it, it would be amazing. It would be a dream come true. It'd be like my birthday and maybe even Christmas, secular Christmas, the one with presents, just, you know, right there in front of me. I would love it. I mean, maybe it's just because I've been a sci-fi nut since forever, but come on, if all of a sudden I realized that everything is different but in a cool way, remember, time machine, Hey, I would dig it like a backhoe. Now let me follow it up with a question for you. What if you discovered that there is no God? What if you had definitive proof that, yeah, your religion, every religion is wrong? Could you wrap your head around that? So, today we are back with another question for the atheist. Here's the question. How did it all start? And this is an obviously disguised God of the Gaps question. Even if I don't know how the universe began, well, that doesn't mean you get to plug in God. Now let's not be too short-sighted on this because this is not necessarily a video on evolution and creationism. Um, duh. That's a distinction that we atheists usually have to explain to theists, not the other way around. I'm asking how it all started. Now some of you actually might know where I'm going with this. Let's talk about a first cause or a first mover, theoretically, philosophically. How did things start? You know what, Skippy? You don't know the answer to that any more than I do. And your book claiming that it's God doesn't back itself up with a shred of evidence. This isn't really the place to bring your arguments against that necessarily. You actually think you get to tell me which arguments I can present? I don't bloody think so, pal. And if you're going to say lunatic, chowder-headed things, I'm going to pwn your ass for it. Oh, yeah. What is your defense for holding such a position? What theories or findings support that notion? But you see, there is a flaw in your premise right from the start. Because you seem to expect that atheists have to be astrophysicists to have as detailed and definitive an idea of the beginning of the universe as you believers have. And it doesn't work that way. You don't have to know everything about the universe or have an idea of what the first cause is to be an atheist. All you have to do is look at the claims of the religious and say, this doesn't hold water. There is insufficient evidence for me to believe, and thus I don't. But you seem to expect that atheists are just like theists, but with no God, that we somehow worship science or something. And that's not the case. It doesn't work like that. Honestly, there's probably plenty that you guys could say on a topic like this, so I don't think I need to keep you here any longer yapping about what points to cover. Good. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying, You amuse me, little man. Your questions do not frighten me. Oh, and don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. Please take the time to rate this video. And hey, if you dig what I do, subscribe. And please visit my Sazzle store, where you'll find all kinds of Bionic Dance merchandise. And remember, if it can't be in your hand, it's all in your head.